Welcome, Ben, uh, to the podcast with me. Thanks, uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, pleasure, pleasure to have you here. Maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, I'm a poker player. been playing for six, seven years now. Uh, well, six, seven years full time. And before that, I was at university. So pretty much all I've been doing since, you know, as a full time job. Um, and currently not doing so much, like studying, coaching, but uh, not really playing much this year. I, I played like as a hobby a little in university, uh, but my university degree was like 50, 60 hours a week. So I didn't have much time. And then after university, I was, yeah, I was playing pretty low for like 18 months, maybe. So what was the change when you said you played low stakes for the first 18 months? Months. What was the change between like you playing low stakes and then all of a sudden it went like very fast to playing the, the highest limits? I, I'm not sure it was all of a sudden. I, th I think it was just like it took a while for me to, I, I don't think I picked up poker naturally on my own as well as I needed to, or as well as some other people. So I think after university, I just had like uh, 18 months learning from a friend of mine. And, you know, it's not like I was just at the exact same stakes the whole 18 months. It was just like slowly moving up. And then even after that, it was kind of slowly too, because I had played some high stakes maybe in the second year when I probably shouldn't have been in the games. But we were like, you know, a lot happier to gamble back then than, than maybe I would like choose to now in some of the bigger games. So it was more a case of like, you know, I'm not sure just because you play a 50k tournament, you can say like you've made it to those stakes if you just like play one and then be like, ha, oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> so, uh, so I think it was just like a slow process until now, really. Mm -hmm. And when was the moment where you said like, okay, like I can play like high stakes on a regular basis? Yeah, I, I'm not actually sure I had that as much. Like, Professional, I I'd said to myself like if I couldn't make thirty thousand a year in the within the first two years, I would quit and do something else. So it was like pretty low aims, but that was just kind of because I wanted some sort of aim, but I wanted to do it. So, uh, so I, and then I think as you're playing, like I never had this direct shift of like oh I'm playing these stakes now and I know I can. I just played whatever games I wanted to and could put myself in or sell action for at the time at every point and i, I never have a thing of like oh now i'm doing this long term because i never even have that many plans for like you know a year or two from then so it's never like oh i'm doing this now and i can do it for the next seven years it's just every year i just kind of oh what trips are on can i play these games and if i think i can at the time i play so i never had that like point of just oh this is what i do now Uh, obviously with COVID this year, life changed. Um, and I don't enjoy online as much, at least not in Europe. You know, if I could move and go to Mexico or something and play, I think I would enjoy it or to Canada. Like, you know, I love playing when I, when I've been to Montreal, playing online is, is great. But here where it's just like the game starts 7 PM and go till 4 AM. I'm just not interested in that in the slightest. Like I still study every day and I'm still coaching, but I just don't play anymore. Uh, so it, it's still kind of that process. If I'm not enjoying it, I just stop. And it's, al it's always been like that, I guess. I just, but I've just happened to always enjoy it. So I've never really taken much time off uh, until now. So, but, you know, I wouldn't call now time off. It's just time off playing. So when you, when you say like COVID hit at you, How does you like? How does your day or how does your week look like right now? And how will it change in the next year? Let's say when when COVID is over. I mean, now I I probably have like five people that I coach regularly. Mm -hmm. So I I have like one session a day, maybe, and then study for a bit myself. Um, you know, there's still some kind of involvement in just like watching streams or watching final table replays just to like because i'm not playing but i still want to keep up with things so, you know you if you just study on your own you don't really know what else is going on in the game uh and then other than that it's just um other stuff now i guess like uh spend time with my girlfriend cycling a lot uh hiking and yeah learning spanish because you know my girlfriend's spanish and i'm I was splitting my time between Spain and England, but right now I'm in Spain. 
So trying to actually learn Spanish so I can speak to more people here. Um, yeah, and then just like a lot of reading or about <laughs> about various things. Just same as always, basically. I guess I just wake up and like whatever I want to do that day, I do that. I mean, I'm hoping I'm hoping the games are going to come back, and I feel I feel pretty optimistic for the second half of the year. At least you know, I don't know what format we're going to see, but I imagine some games come back. Um, you know, I don't I don't know whether we're going to get Vegas like World Series. Uh, at least not like it has been other years for sure. Um, but you know, I, I can never imagine it having the same numbers really um, in 2021. But I think some of the smaller like Triton stops, you know, by September. I don't see why those wouldn't run um, because I assume it will just be a case of something like, uh, you know, you have to have been vaccinated or, um, you know, like strict testing or I don't know. Um, so I, I would hope there'd be at least some games to play and I'll play some of them. Yeah. I think I, I don't really have any intention of the last six years. I guess I've been traveling maybe like between six and 10 months a year. And I, I have no real, real intention of doing that anymore. Uh, it's just it's just too much and like um and things like melbourne like i still want to go to aussie millions because it's just an amazing trip without the poker i think i think last time i went i played four tournaments Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not even really a poker trip it's just like you show up play the main the 25 and the 50k and then like if the big ones run and then uh yeah and then just like hang out in melbourne for a month so i I think some stuff like that i still hope to do and you know ones like barcelona barcelona's two hour train from here so, um, you know, and things like Prague, like I, I would, every year, I think I would be in Prague right now. This would be like the final day. And I'm definitely missing that. So I, I think a lot of these trips I'll still do, but I'm not just going to, I think when you're like starting out, if you're just like 24 single and just playing all the time, you just go to wherever poker is. You know, I had months where it's just kind of four months of just flying from one trip to another without a break. You just like find out where there's poker and just go there. And I, I'm not as interested in that anymore. But if there's going to be like, you know, a Triton stop with tournaments like 25K through to 250K over seven days, like I'm not going to, I'm not really going to miss those. One time I had like a call with, with someone who was interested in my coaching. And he said to me like, um, he, he was like addicted to, to what, what is it called? Like horse, horse races or something. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. So he was, he's like, because when he was a child and his parents um, how, how was this? A little bit like a uh, time ago, like he, like his parents, they had no money and his father gave him like 10 bucks and he said like, yeah, this is your present and um, choose one horse. And like, he, he, cho- like he, he chose the horse and this was one that he made like from 10 bucks, like, I don't know, 200 or something. Right. And for the family it was like a lot at that time. So he, yeah. like as a child, when he grew up, he was like, yeah, like this is how I can make money, like gambling, you know? And then he switched from like the horse, like he did this until he was like a, an adult. And then he switched from like horse, like betting on horses to like slot machines, which is like super bad. You know, like slot machines is one of the worst addictions I think that you can have. And uh, yeah. then switched to like like poker, but have like no control of his bankroll and just like, ha- like no, no study time, whatever. He's just like hoping to get lucky, right? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of that in poker. Poker's poker's that weird crossover where you you get some people who just do very well for forever, you know. Um, like I, like a few of the guys that have just been around for ages. You know, there's uh, I'm sure like people at poker will know kind of roughly who I'm speaking about. But there's like you know quite a few, maybe like ten or more guys that have just been around forever in the tournament scene and. Yeah, like they like to gamble. You kind of have to because you have to be, you have to be at least willing to gamble big because of how tournaments work. So it can't affect you that much. And then once it doesn't affect you that much, like it's if it's a little bit fun, people will just do it. So I feel like everyone's very willing to gamble, some more than others. Um, and I, you know that's kind of one end of poker. And those people have done very well forever and they're just good at making decisions they're good at betting they're good at making decisions with the money they make from poker and then yeah i think then you go all the way down to like the opposite end of the spectrum where people are addicted have won once and convinced themselves that that's the like true outcome like oh i won a tournament and that's what's meant to happen and the other like you know 200 that i lost are me getting unlucky 
<laughs> and then they just like ride that one win for like five years until they lose everything. And I think that, you know, you get a huge spectrum in poker and it's because of the luck factor, you know, like it's, there are some things like if you play tennis for like, you know, you can play tennis for like, you know, just a year or six months or whatever. And if you're not good naturally, you know, very quickly and anyone good can tell you like, no, you have no shot here. Just stop. Or like you play for fun. But in poker, you don't really have that. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, people don't listen, like people can win, there's luck, everything's subjective and people just need like one good result or not even good results. People can just, you know, I know people who have just kind of lost forever and they still think they're really good and it's just been like four years of bad luck. What was the, the biggest mindset learning for you this year? Uh, I mean, I, I think for me it was just to slow it down a bit. Like I, I've always, over the last six, seven years, had just like pressure from myself, I guess, to always push it and just kind of like grind yourself almost to like burning out, just like always on the edge of burning out and then like stopping and only stopping to take rest when I literally just couldn't play anymore. I was like, I'm just playing terribly because I've just played four months in a row. And I think this year of just like, I, you know, I, I played some of the bigger games at the very start because it's, it's almost like a habit, you know, you're like, oh, well, the landscape has changed. We can't play live, but there are these big games running, so I'm just going to play them. And then after a little, I, I just wasn't enjoying it. Um, and yeah, I think it was just like learning to not berate myself for that, I guess, because you have that kind of inner voice, like, oh, I should play. Everyone's playing. And I, it was like a little process a few months during summer, kind of coming around to that. Like, oh, I'm not playing. My friends are. They say the games are great. Should I be? And just kind of getting used to like, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know, like what, what they're doing has no effect on me mm. and I don't want to play and I don't have to play. So, you know, just like, but it, it seems like it could be a clearer decision, but it, you know, it took a lot of, it took like four to six weeks of adjusting. I think I'm just so used to just seven years of just playing all the time. So suddenly just, you know, I'm not sure I've played a hand of poker in, three months or something. What do you recommend people who say like they cannot stop playing and like they have a hard time to, to relax and like switch off their brain and just say like, this is like time off and this is time to grind. I, I think this thing, like I've been asked this before and by various people. And I, I think it's something that people speak about a lot and are trying to like find a solution to, but it's a very personal thing. You know, I, I did that when I was 24 and I've been playing for two years. I did that. I, I barely missed any days, you know, because you're not just your EV in poker. Obviously, like, you know, whenever you earn money in poker, your EV kind of goes up. If you're going to do well in games, being able to take more of yourself or play higher stakes, if you're going to do well in those games, it just increases your future EV as well. So you don't really want to waste time at the start. And then even if your aim is in poker long term, just pushing hard when you can have high EV days just allows you to like take more time off somewhere in the future. And maybe that's a day that's not high EV or a day that you don't want to, like, you know, maybe suddenly you have two kids and you don't want to play every day or you don't want to play at all. And, you know, that like grind when you were 25 and single and had nothing else to do or didn't want to do much else, you know, has paid for that. So I, yeah, it's more of a personal decision. It's not like because I'm taking a lot of time off this year, I feel like I can say to people like, Oh, you know, you should, you should do the same and learn how to take time off yourself. It's like, no, I, I just worked flat out for six, seven years and I made a lot of my EV then and now I don't have to play this year. Sometimes it's hard to like draw the line between because if you ask someone, oh, why are you playing on Christmas? You should do what you want to do. My answer was, you know, people said it to me on birthdays, like, oh, don't play poker on your birthday. Like, do something fun. And I'm like, but what are you talking about? <laughs> like, this is what I want to do on my birthday. Uh, like I just want to play poker all the time. So where would you draw the line between like someone who says like, I want to grind my way up to playing high stakes and someone who says like, I grind, you know, like whenever I want to, and it's, get, it's getting addictive, you know, where's the line and how, how, do, how can people know that? You said like you, you work with Elliot, you, you, you told me what, what your problem were right before you worked with him. So what was the, the, the end result for you? Um, Yeah, I mean, end result is 
end result is tricky because I feel like it's still just a progress thing. You know, I still work with Elliot and the sessions are a lot less common now and it's like check-ins and, um, you know, some of the things he, he helped me with were also just kind of techniques to do that myself. So it was kind of, we have a session and then I spend the next six months working on those things myself. Um, so I feel like some of it is just kind of implementing habits. So rather, I don't see it as like an end goal now. I'm just like, oh, I was better than I started, but I'll be better in three years time. So it at least makes me feel like maybe before I was just a kind of close to zero in terms of like starting progress to find these things that I wasn't happy with. And now I have no idea where I am between like zero and a hundred, but at least I, I'm not at zero. So what would you recommend people who working their way up right now? Um, yeah, I mean, at the start, I still believe in just like outworking everyone, basically. You, you kind of have to these days because, you know, if you looked at poker 10 years ago, people would have experience at poker, but you can look at someone who's played poker for 30 years now, right? And they might now be like considered really bad at poker. And we're like, that experience got you nowhere because the game has evolved so much. And the game is still evolving But the the people at the top now in like cash and MTTs just have so much experience, just incredibly talented, which is very rare. Most of the time, if you're just kind of, you know, because also like you have to be incredibly talented, you have to be more talented than them because it's not like, oh, you know, like Ike isn't talented at poker. You have, so you would either have to be more talented than him to catch up or you have to work harder. So I think it's more choosing your habits, which, you know, you can't do, you you can just make new habits. It just takes a few months of like forcing them on yourself basically. And then they just become habit. Um, and then, yeah, like working with someone obviously helps with that. I think, you know, it stops you getting in the way of yourself, um, stops you having, you know, bad sessions like these days, especially not so much, you know, you can still find very good games these days where you're just making high ROIs, but like once you get to the high stakes these days, it's, you know, some of these games are pretty, pretty low edge, where you're looking at like kind of one to 7% ROI. And, you know, if you, are, maybe you think you're better than one of the regs in the game or six of them or, you know, however many. But if they show up and play their A game every day and you show up and play your A game five days a week and then like your C game one day of the week, they're probably going to beat you. <laughs> like overall, you know, like the edges are really small and people are working really hard. It's not... It's not like, oh, you're just super far ahead of this guy who's also working hard. You know, you might be a little better. I, I think these days it's it's very important to just show up and play very well all the time. It's, you know, I speak to people 10 years ago that they're like, oh, it's fine because you can just make money so quickly in poker that if you're good, it doesn't matter. You have a bad day. You could just play like drunk one day, lose 20K and like, you know, the stories I hear, I didn't play 10 years ago, but people were like, oh, you could just make it back. <laughs> whereas these days it's like people aren't going to give it to you quite as easily mm -hmm. so yeah I, i think showing up and just like playing well and studying well um you know because studying is the same people you realize it more with playing like if you're playing especially if you play tournaments a little harder but if you play something like zoom you know you feel it when you're when you're playing badly you can feel that you're playing badly and you kind of get wrecked and you can stop but with studying it's kind of harder to identify when you're studying badly You know, people are just like, oh, I did two hours of studying and it was just passive studying where they weren't even really listening. And it's like, that's not, that's not studying. You didn't, you barely got anything from this. You probably got like 20 minutes worth of good studying. I'm big on like, uh, just staying physically healthy too. Although I, I have to say, I definitely had parts of my career where I was a lot less, uh, a lot less bothered by that. Just, just like shit hours, you know, when you're going to like Barcelona and you want to play 12 hours a day, 11 days in a row, like it's kind of hard to get up and run in the morning or something. I think it's a lot of just like self-awareness, mm -hmm. which I think sometimes people don't think. People just like don't have awareness of what their long-term goal is. Or, you know, people don't even, haven't even asked themselves what their long-term goal is. Like you said, you know, money gets kind of put in as a, it's just like a substitute for a goal because you haven't thought about what your goal is. And like the number on your screen on PokerStars is going up. So your brain is just like, oh, I guess that like, you know, the number going up must be my goal, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think just like more deliberate assessment of like what your aims are and how you actually get there and then just finding ways to stick to them, which is where the mindset coach comes in because, you know, 
you can set your aims and you can think I'm going to do this. And then you wake up the next day and you're like, ah, you know, like whatever. Yeah. Like that was, that was a good thought I had yesterday, but I don't really want to do it today. Would you recommend someone to, to look for a mindset coach because you got great results, right? So when I talk, for example, with people, sometimes they're like, they're not sure if they need a mindset coach or like they, as I told you, like they, they don't know how to track it. Right. So it's like, yeah. if you charge amount X for your coaching, right? How can you like tr track it? Because like people know like, okay, if I get my six pack back, you know, that's the worth for me. Right. Sure. So, so, so when would you recommend someone to, to work with a mindset coach? I mean, my personal opinion is just as soon as you can afford it. I, I think some people are worried. It, it, it's weird because in poker, everyone thinks about EV. People are like, oh, I'm making 7% ROI in this tournament. So even though most of the time I'm going to lose, no one's like, oh, that was a bad investment after they played the tournament. People are like, yeah, you just like, you lose 85% of the time, but your 7% is just an, an average. I've had so many people have good reviews of working with uh, various mindset coaches. And some of this stuff, it's hard to judge because, you know, some people are like, oh, I, I don't have an issue with this or I don't need help with that. And you don't always know yourself because people just lie to themselves all the time or just like you're too involved in your own thoughts to know what's actually, you know, affecting you in some way. So some of the stuff Elliot and I went over, it wasn't like me going to him and saying, hey, I need help with this. It was just me saying something and him being like, huh, you know, you speak about this subject in a kind of way that makes me think you're like this happened to you when you were younger or something. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it did. Like, I guess we have to talk about that now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you know, you don't always know. And if you're thinking about doing it and you think the chances are you're going to do it at some point, then any of these things that change your long term thinking for the better, you might as well just do as early as possible because, you know, it's like, OK, you have a six year career. Maybe you do it in year four and you get two years of benefit from it. But you could have just done it in year zero and got six years. And you spend the same. So, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, from my point of view, where it's just helped me an incredible amount, and I have friends who it's helped a lot too, um, you know, I'm going to be biased towards just like do it as soon as you feel like you can afford it, um, especially within poker, like a little less so these days, but people spend so much money on like things that, you know, uh, my first year in world series like i spent way more than i needed on the like the house rent for the six weeks um and like restaurants in vegas or <laughs> you know like like just just like random just like uh yeah just everything i guess like you know flights and uh i feel like there's always stories of that in poco when you speak to people of like oh you know i I got this flight for this much and people are always like, oh, I paid like three times as much because I just like didn't care and didn't look or I double booked or something. Poker players are a little, you know, like hazy with money sometimes. You said like before you, you focused on like working on your mindset, you had like some, some habits that were not so good, right? So how did you manage to replace the bad habits, the old habits with the new habit? Some people recommend meditation and then someone who like, doesn't want to do that and like doesn't enjoy it it's just pushing themselves just like hitting their head against a wall for six months being like oh why don't i enjoy it and it's like well maybe that's not for you you know and i when i haven't been recently because of covid but when i climb i feel like i have a very similar experience to when people when people describe meditation to me like i'm only thinking about that i don't socialize at all i like i mean i do if i go with friends but if i go on my own which is most of the time i just climb and you can't think about other stuff because it's like uh you know, it's just, you're just too involved. You know, it's like, uh, it's like we're the same with reading. Like if, you know, I think reading's amazing. You can get so much information from books, um, not, not for poker, but for like various things. Um, I think sometimes people really feel forced to like read a book that they've been recommended and it's, you know, you should just be willing to quit things. If, you know, if you become like a permanent quitter where you just quit everything and you just like never push yourself anything, that's bad. But you should be willing to quit things that you're not enjoying because you don't get anything out of this. Like forcing yourself to read a 500 page book that you're not enjoying, you won't get much out of that because you won't even be taking it in. You're just like autopilot the way through it. And I think it's the same with habits. You know, if, if your friend is saying to you, oh, like I run 5K every morning and it works for me and you run 5K three days in a row and you hate it, like just stop, you know, but don't stop and do nothing. Just stop and 
do more research about habits that might work for you. But if you kind of like something, but it's just a bit of effort, you know, at some point you're just going to have to kind of battle out for the first month or two until it becomes a habit. But, uh, but things become a habit pretty fast, you know, now, unless it's raining, I cycle every day, like just literally every day. So I, I think like eventually in the long term, you know, if you find good habits that you like and work for you, um, you know, they, they just like, don't take much effort in the long run. It's just that like, you know, the effort is finding which ones work for you and then making those habits. The advice that I can give people who like start from, from like scratch, basically, who have like a very low average buy-in is first of all, like surround yourself with like good people who are like on your level, or maybe a little bit above, right? So you can get a lot of feedback in, right? Especially in poker, there's like a lot of missing information. So you want to have like feedback from different sides. Yeah, I mean, I, I think once you get to the higher stakes, it, it, for me, it almost feels more preventative. Like, you know, I don't, there's a limit to how big your edges can get in the highest games. You know, it's like if I play a 30-person field with 28 of the best players in the world and two spots, like, there's a there's a cap on my ROI, and it's pretty low. And it's pretty low. It's more preventative of like, you know, maybe if you're in the middle of the pack of regs, maybe you think you're making three or four percent ROI, and this isn't too far from losing. So it's more preventative. It's like I'm not trying to like, you know, outperform like Stevie by like getting mindset coaching. Like that's not my aim. My aim is to like not be a losing player in the field because I like show up one day and just like don't want to play. Um, or like played on a day. I shouldn't. I mean, one thing I will say about what you said about the um, when you're starting out, you know, finding people around you. I it's it's hard to have a lot of experience in that, obviously, because you just have like your own kind of one journey. And but I I disagree with that a little. I think people put a bit too much weight on that. I always hear people advise people in poker to like, oh, find people at your stakes to speak to. And I think this is fine, but you're you know there are i mean run it once these days you know i think it's like 30 a month or something for the essential one and they have coaches at different levels you know for me i i watch maybe four or five guys on there um and depending where you are there's going to be different people you want to watch depending on what games you play um but for someone starting out there's just so much information on there of pretty much all of the pros, regardless of their level or like how well they've done or like which games they play or which stakes they play, they've all made a career out of poker and they're going to have like something useful that you don't have if you're playing five and L Zoom. You know, they know more than you. <laughs> and you can pay 30 a month and listen to all these people and just absorb like all the information. And as you get better and you start to realize who the, who the like better people are, where the better information is coming from, um, you can, you know, you can like, start to decide what to listen to and even free stuff like you know ben Spee has a free channel like with him just like explaining how he thinks about poker so i think these things are the better way to go because maybe if you're like okay you start with a friend you both for whatever reason like feel like or have been told you both have like a natural inclination to being good at poker and you're gonna like try and move up together sure that's fine but if you're starting at five and L Zoom and you're like, oh, I'm going to speak to this guy who's at 10 and L Zooms. He must be better than me. It's like, well, maybe he's been at 10 and L Zoom for four years and he's like drawing dead to move up because he would have by now. And you think you're like learning from someone better than you. But actually this person is like just giving you bad advice again and again because they haven't actually made a career out of poker. So I think once you're at levels that low where you're not actually talking to other pros and you don't know how to like decipher good information versus bad information, I don't actually like the like... You know, they're like, oh, let's get five, five and L Zoom guys together and talk about it. Because, yeah, like that's that's reasonable. But you need information to be coming from somewhere that you actually can rely on somewhat, not just like five of you bouncing bad ideas around. What my clients um, really like is like finding finding your why. You know, why do you why do you do certain things? Yeah, the, the why is important. I think that's when people don't stick to like when it comes down to it a lot. Obviously, you will have more experience than me here. But I think when it comes down to it, when people are having habits that don't match their goals, it often comes down to them not being sure about why they want to do their goal. You know, like there's something in them that's like not sure about doing this. Like maybe because that can happen with poker. People would like, oh, you know, someone's not studying enough or something. And maybe they're like actually not sure they want to like sacrifice this much of their 20s to poker because it takes so much from you. You're people playing like 70 hours a week. 
And maybe there's something in them that's like, oh, maybe I should just be like enjoying myself a bit more. And that's why they won't do it, you know? And like, you can sort those out if you kind of address that issue. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I agree often. It's like, uh, yeah, with, with all things, it's like figuring out why you want to do stuff. And if you have the why like set in stone and you are very confident with why you want to do stuff, it becomes a lot easier to introduce the habits. The, 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 the habits as well, like replacing bad habits with good habits. I, I read um, something short the other day. Um, so, you know, don't quote me on anything. I'll probably get a few things off. But um, I, th- I think they were just referring to it as a thought process called inversion. And they were saying that rather than trying to figure out like how to be good at something. So I feel like that's like my approach with habits sometimes is if I feel like a habit is bad for me, I'm like, okay, why is this habit bad? Identify it and make sure I can identify in the future if like, you know, because sometimes you quit a habit and something similar that just looks different fills its place. But like being able to identify a bad habit and then working hard to not have bad habits is almost just as useful. And then like, if you always did that, because you, you know, there's always going to be space that needs to be filled. You're, you're going to fill the space with something naturally. Like, especially if you're kind of like curious and active, you're not just going to have this dead space in your life. So if you get very good at identifying bad habits and eradicating them, then you don't need to worry as much about like finding the good habits and bringing those in because every time a bad habit comes in, you get rid of it. So like eventually you're only going to be left with good habits because of how good you got at the process of, of doing that. What are your goals for uh, 2021? Because a lot of people, a lot of poker players, you know, they, um, some of them struggle with, with setting goals in the first place, but for poker players, setting goals is, is, is a lot harder, right? Because you, you cannot say, I want to make this amount of money per month, right? So, yeah. so, so what's, what, what's your advice for poker players? And then I, I share my experience with Yeah, I guess it's a tough one to give advice to because I, I see people that I know in poker all the time being like, oh, I want to win a bracelet this year or something. And I, I never really set goals like that because they're just so out of your control. Um, my, my goals are usually kind of smaller time frames. Like I don't, I'm not like, oh, 2021 because I don't even separate the years like that. Like I said earlier, I'm not that sentimental about like Christmas or New Year's or birthdays. So my years aren't like January to January. But, you know, a few years ago, I... I felt like I wasn't where I wanted to be in poker in terms of my habits and studying. And I just like decided I took three months off, probably played two or three sessions in three months and just studied six, seven days a week for those three months before going back and playing a lot. And for me, that was kind of like the start of that. I think it was in maybe early March, the first month. That felt to me like a new year. You know, I was like, oh, like January 1st wasn't my new year. This was. And I usually have kind of like more... Small, like shorter term goals like that. Just like, oh, for these three months, I'm going to study hard and make sure that this aligns with like, what I want to do in the future and regularly checking in. And I set goals more, more like that, like weekly and monthly. And then just like maybe every three months I check in to make sure that my kind of weekly and monthly aims and what I'm doing in my life actually kind of is aligned with where I want to be in a few years. So I feel like my goal is more like a, process you know just like act how i want to act over the next few years every month and i check in on that but i don't have like oh in three years i want to be here because i feel like so you know you could have done that a year ago and then like like so many things change and your mindset can change and i also want to like keep my keep my mindset open to what i want to do um you said you also coach people right so um what would you what would you say or Do you look for clients or like when, when should people come to you? When should they contact you? If they see this um, podcast and they think like, you know, Ben is a great guy. I want to work with him. How can they contact you and which people are you looking for? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't look actively because at the moment I, like I said, I have, you know, five people that I coach every week and um, some people have multiple sessions a week. So it's like, I'm not trying to, and it's not, that's not my, I do it now and I love it. And basically all five of them are friends of mine. So it's something I enjoy, but it's not my job. My job is a poker player. For like the general public, it's, I just coach MTTs and generally, um, or yeah, I mean, pretty much solely mid, mid stakes. Yeah. I mean, if people are interested, like obviously they can, they can message me. It's like, uh, I think easy to find on Facebook or Instagram, but, um, But yeah, at the moment, it's like a, it's something I like doing. It's, 
I, I find it very rewarding to like coach people, especially people I'm friends with and see people, if you're doing it long term, see people get better over the time you work with them. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's not like I'm out searching for people at the moment. Yeah, so, so I'll definitely uh, link your social accounts, you know, in the description. Sure. And uh, people can definitely reach out to you, right? I'm sure they will enjoy yeah. this podcast. And uh, yeah, for the people who are watching, if you want to uh, see more of Ben, you know, I linked his socials down below. And yeah, thanks for watching.